Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully you all had a good cup of tea and coffee. So uh, this is going to be an interesting panel and I'll open it up pretty quickly for the audience to start the Q&A. Okay? I don't want to be here talking amongst the panel for a long time. But let me just give you a little bit of context uh, before we get into that. Uh, so I think from the day, the whole day, it's pretty clear that innovation is a critical part of any organization's mandate as we go ahead. Uh, but whether innovation is resulting in a competitive advantage or in this case profitability and value creation is still not clear. And I'll just give you a little bit of uh, context in terms of what Accenture has been doing. We did a research recently, interviewed about 500 odd multinational organizations. There's some interesting results which came out. Almost 70% of those organizations said that innovation is in the top five enterprise priority list. Right? So it's right at the top for some, it is even in the top two or three. <coughs> well, that's one statistics. The other is that uh, more than 50% of them said that the funding for innovation in their organization is increasing. So that's a pretty big number. That if 50% of the organization are saying that money going in the innovation is increasing. So those are two statistics. But the third one was a shocker, where 18% only said that they have got the ROI from innovation. So on one hand, it's a big priority. On the other hand, funding is going there. But the ROI is still questioning. And a similar uh, st study from PwC has also resulted in that while innovation is happening, the economic value creation is not certain. and. Uh, that is resulting in a lot of organizations to cut down uh, on their innovation initiative, which is obviously uh, not the best desirable outcome as we would look into. So with that as a context, we would try and uh, flesh out some of these reasons in this panel. And uh, hopefully, you know, the panelists will give their own insights, but we'll also like to involve the audience in the same as well. So that's basically the context. And I'll now open it up to the panel, one by one they'll answer. But uh, I think the first question which I want to ask all of you is that suddenly we see innovation has become very important. Right? Whether it is a startup, whether it's a corporate, whether it is a, the government, all of them are talking about innovation. Why do you think you know, innovation suddenly has caught up so much uh, and, and everybody is talking about it? So if you can give your views, that would be great. Good evening, everyone. Um, so uh, I uh, lead the digital strategy and innovation practice for KPMG. So quite a few, a lot of things that I talk about today would be in terms of what we have seen our clients, you know, when they are taking up their innovation agenda and why is it becoming important for them. Uh, so why innovation has suddenly become a buzzword, you know, everywhere you see. I think uh, a lot of established organizations are feeling threatened. Um, you know, we talk about the VUCA word, we are talking about disruption and so on, and it is real. So we see uh, a lot of time corporates are blindsided by the changes that are taking uh, place. They are not nimble enough, they are not able to move fast enough. And as a result, they are increasingly feeling the need to have a focus on innovation simply to understand what is happening out there and to be abreast of all the changes that are happening in the world. So I think that's one. Competition is coming from non-traditional, um, if I may say, organizations. Um, secondly, I think uh, in terms of their consumers themselves, uh, these corporates are realizing that the kind of consumers that they were dealing in the past are no longer the same. You know, uh, Millennials is often a very uh, commonly an abused word. But I think that is changing, you know, when I deal with my kids and they are like 15 and 12, I feel that their way of thinking and needs are very different and every time I have to do a test check, I do it with my kids first to see what is happening out there. Um, so I think for organizations to know how consumers have evolved and are evolving because of tech, mobility, whatever have you, is real and hence they have to keep on innovating just to be abreast again with whatever other consumer needs. So that's an important one. The third thing I feel is that um, cost pressures are real. Um, most organizations when they set up the budgets for next year they asked okay how much are you going to grow, top line growth and cost reduce, right? Reduction. So it's like that, it's a divergent thing, increase uh, top line and reduce your kind of you know cost. 
Now, how do you uh, make a disruption out there? Uh, traditionally, all these corporates have started, you know, incremental uh, changes, you know, uh, in the way they are reducing cost, in the way they are uh, building efficiency. But none of them have really helped them in uh, leading to a very disruptive kind of reduction in their cost. So innovation is also seen as some way for them to really look at a quantum change in you know the way they are actually looking at their cost structures. So these are few things which are real and which is leading really corporates to think at innovation in a big way. Uh, I completely agree. Uh, so I completely agree. Um, so I just go back to see what happened in the last 17, 18 years in the industry. If you look at it, uh, initially when work started coming to India, especially the IT and the BPO sectors, uh, there's hardly any competition and uh, people used to outsource because there is a cost arbitrage, right? Uh, just by moving work to India, uh, there is a lot of money that companies would save. Over a period of time, if I'm going today to a customer and trying to sell my company, the question first comes is how different are you, right? And I don't have anything different in my company to sell. So what I will sell is I'll sell innovation. I will sell value. I'm going to tell any client that I'm going to deliver value to you without even having a proper structure that I have in an organization to deliver that value. So in order to fulfill that commitment once that customer is there, then I'll, I don't know how to do it. Therefore, I will have to reach out to my people, my employees, and I do it in a much, you know, hurried way. Therefore, unable to really give the kind of value that I can if I had to really, really embark that culture of innovation. That is point number one. Number two is the only way to survive today is to tell the customer that I'm going to give you the best quality at a very affordable price, and also that you will see that this is a, not a one-time or a two-time thing. It's a sustainable long term story because companies which reap the benefits in short term are losing big time in the long term because they are not able to sustain. So in order for them to sustain, I think the only way is to uh, get to innovation, innovative practices that will see that, you know, that growth is sustainable and they are not falling down from the top. That's what my uh, sense around. Yeah, uh, I come from a B2C framework, so you know we run a health foods brand called True Elements. So uh, part of it, my examples are uh, B2C centric. I, I'll add up to you know uh, uh, what was said earlier. The first is consumers are no longer you know things which sort of put as differentiators earlier were are no longer differentiators. People are consumers are far more discerning. We know much more than what we knew uh, a few years back. So people have to evolve, uh, producers, marketeers, business professionals have to evolve and actually be far more realistic and honest rather than what they were a few years back. That's one of the areas, uh, that's why there is a need to innovate. The flip side to it is, um, uh, innovate is also a, a better English word for different. You know, a lot of people today use innovation instead of word different. How are you innovative instead of just being different? And unfortunately, that's a big uh, challenge, you know, when uh, you asked Avnish about why is there a need to innovate. It's just that there are too many people chasing fewer customers and hence they just want to, as Subha said, they just want to say we are innovative. And by saying we are different, it's no longer sexy. So, you know, we, the people use the word innovative for that. That's, that's something that, you know, has increased the need of it. In my understanding. Okay, I think excellent points, I would uh, concur with all of them, but there is one more uh, which I would like to talk about uh, for a minute is, the, uh, you know, what we are looking at from a technology perspective as well, right, while the business side of innovation is pretty clear, but it has, I think, in some way or the other got fueled by the massive disruptive technologies which are impacting our life, our society and our work. Uh, so it started off with a smack set of technologies, social mobility, analytics, cloud, all those were there. But now we are looking into the next train, which is artificial intelligence and all nuances of artificial intelligence. We are looking at blockchain, we are looking at augmented reality, virtual reality, quantum computing, 3D printing. These, these are like, you know, each one of them, and when they combine together, they are producing some very, very disruptive trends in the industries and marketplaces and also the businesses. So I, I guess that there is a little bit of 
technology element involved as well because uh, you know nobody has, uh, previously such kind of uh, unprecedented change has never been experienced what what we are experiencing so i guess that would be also something which would probably go with all the points uh, which were raised uh, by the panelists excellent so moving on neha let me ask you one pertinent question uh, which has always intrigued me because when i talk to my clients i always find it about 80 to 90% of the clients struggle with this particular problem which is a problem of structure right and what we have seen is that uh, many many clients and uh, many organization have a innovation team right this is a small innovation team which has been given the mandate of uh, well innovating right and uh, unfortunately they may not be that uh, interlinked with the business unit uh, and uh, and for whatever reason you know the business unit are the people who actually hold the the, the money the funding right so on one hand uh, the business people are dictating what kind of projects to take forward or not take forward and innovation team are doing their best trying to come up with disruptive ideas and then basically see that the business unit is not interested to take that ahead so in this kind of a scenario what do you think is the best organization structure should the innovation teams be centralized or should they be embedded in business units 